Opera World presents Gilbert and Sullivan. This is the best version of Ruddy Gore by Gilbert and Sullivan that I found. I call it a musical comedy. Some people call it an opera. Some people call it an operetta. It doesn't matter what you call it. There's spoken dialogue with songs put in between. So, and it's a comedy. So, or it's supposed to be funny anyway, for people who understand it. I mentioned Gilbert and Sullivan in one of the past posts because I'm very concerned about the way the world is going in Europe and in America, the United States of America, going toward fascism and control. I have nothing against control if it's rational control for good and logical reasons. But just random control for the sake of control is pure evil and sinister. But instead of picking up a weapon, a gun, I would rather pick up a joke and humor and comedy and use that as a weapon. We live not by bread alone, but every word, etc. Are you familiar with that, good Christian? Good Muslim? We have to speed along here, because I don't want this post to be too long. This is a, a very old book, printed in 1888. Okay? Printed in 1888. And it was written, it says, in the preface, but I don't know if it's true because there are a lot of anonymous and fictitious names that are attributed as authors. But it says, Reverend Waldo Masaros, published by Globe Bible Publishing Company in 1888. The morality that this book espouses is so old-fashioned that the human race would have become extinct if people actually did follow what Reverend Masaros recommends. Maybe somebody somewhere had a hidden agenda. I don't claim that to be true, but my suspicion tells me that there are people who have hidden agendas. And Gilbert and Sullivan hits it right off, as usual. I have nothing against the middle class. I have nothing against the bourgeoisie. Because I consider myself part of lower middle class. But there are snobs in the lower middle class. There are prigs. And there are prissy people who use morality as a weapon. Who are base hypocrites because they don't follow their own advice. And this is where Gilbert and Sullivan's humor and comedy comes in. This is sung by a soprano, the song, about a book on etiquette. And modern ears have trouble with sopranos. And I believe that it's because of gender identification the masculization of humanity and the destruction of feminine women. So the soprano speaks in a high-pitched voice or sings in a high-pitched voice that hurts the modern ear. But get used to it and try to listen to the words. They're very important about morality Formality. Hush, dear aunt, for thy words pain me sore. Hung in a plated dish cover to the knock of the workhouse door, with naught that I could call mine own save a change of baby linen and a book of etiquette. Little wonder if I have always regarded that work as a voice from a parent's tomb. This hallowed volume, composed 
if I may believe the title page, by no less an authority than the wife of the Lord Mayor, has been through life my guide and monitor. By its solemn precepts, I have learned to test the moral worth of all who approach me. The man who bites his bread or eats peas with a knife, I look upon as a lost creature. And he who has not acquired the proper way of entering and leaving a room is the object of my pitying horror. Those in the village who bite their lips. And really, I won't use their pocket combs in public places. In truth, I could pursue this painful theme much further. But behold, I have said enough. But is there not one among them who is faultless in thine eyes? For example, young Robin. He combines the manners of a Marquis with the morals of a Methodist. Couldst thou not love him? And even if I could, how should I confess it unto him? For lo, he is shy and saith naught. 